Hey, welcome back, guys. This is our last video for our midterm review. This is going to be dealing with uh, Unit uh, 5, which is Chapter 7 in your textbook. Uh, in my class, we didn't test or quiz on it, so I don't really know the extent of what kind of you got out of this, what kind of a grasp you have on this stuff. But um, let's go ahead and review it so that way you're prepared for our midterm. This is going to be on Chapter 7 of this textbook, and you can follow along with this link here. A um, couple things about sampling distribution. It's kind of the basis for everything we're going to be learning for after the midterm. We're going to be talking about using inference. We're going to be doing tests, confidence intervals, a lot of just heavy things that, that require a good solid foundation of what a sampling distribution is. So remember that a sampling distribution is basically a, if you were to get a, a bunch of different samples, you go out and you take a, a sample proportion, you ask a bunch of questions, hey, what's your opinion on um, uh, public transportation in New York City or whatever? And you get their yes or no's and you tabulate them. And if you do this as a random sample, the mean of that sample distribution will always be the population proportion. And the standard deviation will follow this crazy formula over here. Um, so it's going to be P comma, and then this P1 minus P over N, okay, with the square root over it. So that's how that sampling distribution works. Um, and you got to remember, you don't want to sample more than 10% of the population. Um, with a z-score, you're going to be doing normal distributions. I'm always a fan of normal CDF, but if you have to use a z-score, for instance, for a multiple choice question, you'd always have your sample proportion as your value. But then your mean is going to be your population of proportion. So it's going to be this one right here. And then your standard deviation is going to be um, this formula on the denominator. So remember a z-score is just value minus mean over standard deviation. Um, you can also extend that to two populations, so two proportions. If you're doing a difference, you just subtract the population proportions. And then if you're doing um, you know, two proportions, then you're going to add their variances. So you follow that this formula right here. Um, take the square off, square square root, square it, and then add them together, and then take the square root to get their combined standard deviation. Um, kind of a little heavier on that formula, but remember you do have this in your formula sheet. It'll be on the the back side or the second page if it's all if it's not one you know front and back. Um, it's going to be under sampling distributions for one uh, one and two population proportions. So there's the symbols and terminology. Um, the same thing can be applied for means. Um, with with means, the you can go out and get a bunch of samples of averages. So let's say you want to take an average height of a certain population and you get their average height. And if you randomly sample, you'll get a bunch of samples. And that average of those sample means should represent the population mean. If you randomly sample, it's going to follow a normal distribution if the conditions are right. So if you have at least 30 in your sample, um, whether or not the population was normal or not, or if the population is normal, you should have an approximately normal sampling distribution with the mean of whatever the um, population mean is and the standard deviation of this formula here, which is the population standard deviation divided by the square root of n. Again, we do want to make sure we're not sampling more than 10% of the population. And once again, for a difference of two means, you would subtract the population means and square their standard deviations, add them and take the square root if we're combining them. That's also on your formula right below proportions, right in the middle of that second sheet. So it's going to look just like this. All right, so I don't want to sit here to read more to that. Let's get into these last problems. There's only going to be three problems on this video. Let's take a look at the first one. In a large US city, the distribution of household incomes is strongly skewed to the right with a mean of 89,000 and a standard deviation of 21,500. Suppose 40 households from the city were randomly selected. And again, even though the population is skewed to the right, because our sample size is so large, we can say that our shape of our sampling distribution is going to be approximately normal. Okay, so the shape of the sampling distribution in this case will be approximately normal 
because that sample size is large. And generally speaking, we want to go for about 30 or more to, to feel good about staying approximately normal. That's called the central limit theorem, CLT. So if the population was normal to begin with, it wouldn't matter your sample size. Your sampling distribution is going to be approximately normal. But since it's skewed, we have to rely on the sample size to help us with that. So how do I get the mean and standard deviation? Well, you're going to follow those formula sheet formulas. So the mean of the, uh, the sampling distribution will always be the population mean. And the population mean is right here, 89,000. So the standard deviation will follow the population standard deviation divided by the square root of the sample size. So the sample size is going to be 40. The population standard deviation is 21,500. So the mean of all those individual samples is the population mean, $89,000. The standard deviation of all those individual samples, there should be a little bar over that X, is the population standard deviation over the square root of the sample size, which is 21,500 divided by the square root of 40. That's going to give you, and use your calculator, about 3399.45, 3399.45. And again, remember those two are on your formula sheet, so don't be afraid to look at that formula sheet to help you remember those, so you don't have to memorize them. Uh, the last part it says, what's the probability that a randomly selected sample of 40 households from the city will have a mean household income of at least 95,000? So now that we have a normal distribution, we can, we can make a little sketch. So what you want to think about is a normal curve. You want, in this case, to know what's going to be at least 95,000. So you want to find 95,000 and shade to the right since it's at least. And remember, the mean of that is going to be 89,000. So that's going to be right in the center. And it's going to have a standard deviation of about 3399.45. So I'm not going to sit here and mark all the standard deviations. That's not necessary. But what you're going to do is you're going to want to go into your calculator and do normal CDF. And we've reviewed that already, so I'm not going to pull up my calculator. But your inputs will look like this. You want your upper to be large because it's going to infinity. Um, but don't just put 9999. We want to put a really large number in this case because that's already a large lower bound. So make that very large to compensate for how large of a number that is. Your mean would be 89,000. Your standard deviation is 3399.545. Um, calculate that out, and you get about 0 0.0387. So what that represents is about 3.878% of that area's curve, shaded curve. And if I'm putting this answer as a write-up, I would say in a sample, in sample sizes of 40, if I were to do many, many sample sizes of 40, um, I would expect that the average household income would be at least 95,000 in those samples. 3.878% um, uh, of the time. All right, let's look at our next question. In a congressional district, 55% of the registered voters are Democrats, which the following is equivalent to the probability of getting less than 50% Democrats in a random sample of size 100. Um, so in this problem right here, it tells you 55% of the registered voters are Democrats, which means your population proportion is simply going to be 0.55, 55%. So I know that P is 0.55. Um, I know that my sample size is 100. And I know that my standard deviation is always going to be the square root, and this is on your formula sheet, P, 1 minus P, over N. I know that my mean of my sampling distribution will be simply the population proportion. So what I know is I'm going to have a normal curve. I know the center of that normal curve is going to be 0.55. So I'm going to draw that out. I know this, uh, the standard deviation is going to be the square root of 0.55. 1 minus 0.55, so that's going to be 0.45. 
over 100. That's my sample size. And what I want to know is what is the probability of getting less than 50% Democrats in a sample size of 100? So if I go over here and I say, hey, 50%, that's over here, and I want to go less than, what's the probability of being less than 0 0.50? And so you notice that 0 0.50, that's your value, okay? That's my value. So in a, in a z-score, value goes first, mean goes second, standard deviation goes on the bottom. So if you think about it, my value is 0.5. My mean is 0.55. And my standard deviation is that clunky formula, 0.55 under the square root, um, 0.45 over 100. And since it's going to the left, left, you're going to have Z less than that. So we should have an answer that matches up with that. And that's going to be answer choice B. So there's my work a little bit more um, user friendly for you. All right, let's look at one more and then we're going to call this video uh, over with. All right, last question. It is estimated that 89% of adults in the U.S. have graduated high school. A simple random sample of 100 U.S. adults found that 92 graduated from high school. Which of the following represents the approximate probability of obtaining a random sample of 100 U.S. adults in which 92 or more graduated high school? So in this problem here, um, we have 89% of all U.S. adults have graduated high school. Once again, that's our population proportion. So that's gonna be your mean. Your mean of the sampling distribution is P, and that's gonna be 0.89. So your mean in the Z-score is always gonna be minus after the minus sign. So I know it's gonna be this one, this one, or this one. This is not a binomial, so we can rule that out. And I know my value is gonna be 92 graduated high school out of 100, so 92 out of 100. That's your sample proportion. That's going to be 0.92. So that's going to be um, all of those. So that doesn't really narrow it down. So when you're dealing with your standard deviation, remember in a normal curve with, with proportions, it's always going to be P, so 0.89. It's a normal curve with uh, 0.89. But then over here, it's going to be the square root P, 1 minus P over N. Not P hat, just P. So what is P? Well, it's going to be 0.89. 1 minus 0.89, which is 11%, so 0.11 over 100. And you should see your answer up there. Just make sure it goes in the square root. So that should be answer choice B. Don't be fooled by this. Don't pick the sample. The sample, the only place the sample goes is there. This is going to be the square root P, 1 minus P over N. Um, so that concludes our video. Let me show you the work a little bit more user-friendly typed out. And you can write down any information on you that is uh, relevant. Thank you for watching and good luck on your midterm. If you need any help, reach out to me. I'm accessible usually. Have a great day. Bye.